Robert Steele, it's uh, such an honor to have you here at the Herland Report. Uh, you are the CEO of Earth Intelligence Network, and you have been working with the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA, as a spy uh, for many years all over the world. You also lived in South America and spent a lot of time in Asia. You were also the one that the created uh, the Marine Corps Intelligence Command and you are, one may say you are to the CIA what William Binney That's a good way to put it. is to the NSA. We just recently went through all this, the Donald Trump in the standoff with Congress. One of the remarkable um, elements in his speech when addressing the nation was the blatant attack on the multi-billion dollar drug industry in the United States, that drug mafia that is dependent precisely on having those borders open. Mm. Uh, and to see the fight between uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Nancy Pelosi, who then is virally fighting for the continuation of illegal activity on the southern border. Well, I think El Chapo just named Nancy Pelosi as one of his best friends. I mean, in this recent court case, El Chapo was talking about politicians that made his life easier, and Nancy Pelosi was one of them. George W. Bush, H.W. Bush, was another. The entire Texas legal system is designed to allow for the trafficking of drugs and children. Okay? Children out, drugs in. Open borders are essentially code for destroying your ethnic cohesion. They are essentially code for destroying your country. Now, a lot of people don't realize that in the Barcelona Agreement in the late 1990s, all of the European leaders were bribed by the Arabs to accept millions of unemployed Muslim men as a safety valve for the dictators in the Arab countries. And the public is not paying attention. The public doesn't understand that people like Macron, M Macron doesn't have any children. I think Merkel and Macron are two of the most evil leaders in history with respect to the, the rich texture of Europe and the prosperity and, and peace of Europe. They have betrayed Europe as if they were traitors in every possible way. So open borders for me, the president is right. Now, let me also say, I think the president, when he talks about a wall, he's not just talking about a physical war, wall. He's, he's talking in metaphorical terms. America has been undermined by traitors within and traitors without. And I believe that the Trump movement is largely about America first and restoring the goodness of America the beautiful. And that's what I'm certainly committed to. I would like to see the Nordics do the same thing. The Canadians have a major problem. The Canadians are being invaded by illegals from all over the world, and they're losing their cohesion. I'd like to see Quebec be free, uh, and Scotland, and Ireland. We need to localize. There is an author that's, that wrote The Black Swan, but he's also written two books called Anti-Fragility and, uh, and Skin in the Game, Nicholas Taleb. A Nobel Peace Prize, despite the problems with that prize committee, was given to, uh, no, a Nobel Economics Prize was given to Eleanor Ostrom for a book called Governing the Commons. Her Nobel winning book and the work of Nicholas Taleb, who is easily a Nobel level author and thinker, all come down to localize, distribute, be self-sufficient at the canton level, the province level, the city level. Top-down management does not work because top-down management is both stupid, ignorant, completely uninformed, and too easy to corrupt. So you need to get down to the point where the people making the decisions are the people who are most affected by the decisions. And that's why I think with the internet eventually, a new internet, completely new internet, I think we're going to have direct democracy. And that is at the heart of the problem, isn't it? What is actually happening to our democracies? Uh, do we live under the rule of the people anymore? No. And Deng Xiaoping in China did a very interesting experiment as he introduced um, a capitalism 
under the red banners of uh, communism and to what degree is the same being done in the West, just the opposite way around, that a globalist elite is taking over our democracy and taking control over our democracy under the banners of democracy, uh, authoritarianism and totalitarianism is actually being implemented. You're absolutely right. And, and I think, well, first off, let me say about China, it's not a communist state. There are two books that I recommend on, on China. One, and they're both by Parag Khanna, who's a very distinguished scholar. The first, which, uh, which he wrote a few years ago, is called Connectography, which makes the point that China has completely defeated the United States everywhere in the world by spending money on infrastructure instead of elective wars. His second book, The Future is Asian, is an absolutely superb data-packed book which makes the point that China is only one-third of Asia, uh, actually one-third of South Asia or West Asia, and he makes the point that the Asian countries are technocratic, pragmatic countries. They're making decisions based on experience and facts rather than the Western system in which the bankers control the politicians like puppets. So there will be, I, I, he's right, the future is Asian, and we're all going to become partially Asian over the next 20 years. Now, after the Asian century, I'd like to have the Nordic Arctic century. And that's why I'm eager to have the Nordic countries understand this concept of an open source agency. Then my one question remains, how on earth are you going to wake up the Nordic public? Because we do have a dire problem, as well as you do here in the United States. Pertaining to your media, over 90% is owned by only six corporations, and when you spill that into how Congress women and men are you know, elected and again sponsored by the same type of groups that also own the media here, uh, how on earth will you ever have an enlightened public I think of it as a three-part solution. And Trump, there are rumors that Trump does not want to run in 2020. I mean, the White House is a cesspool compared to what he's used to. I mean, he walks around in his bathrobe at night looking for cockroaches, okay? I mean, this is a horrible experience for this guy to have to live in a slum like the White House compared to what he's used to at Trump Tower. If Trump does not run, we may or may not have a revolution in 2020, but I think we will certainly have one in 2024. 70% I, I, of the eligible voters in the United States of America are completely blocked out of the system. The Democratic Party controls 17%. The Republican Party controls 13%. There are another 20% that are activists, that are independents, libertarians, greens. 50% don't vote at all. President Trump was elected by 27% of the eligible voters. Barack Obama was elected by 26% of the eligible voters. So for me, the reason I value Trump is because he has the power to throw the press out of the White House, to create an alternative truth channel that is a two-way interactive collective education channel that uses seven-minute videos to educate the public on everything. And if he combines that with election reform so that he has a, an honest Congress that cannot be bought, then he's king of the world. And then he can do what I think he's already doing at one level, which is he and Xi Jinping and Vladimir Putin are having conversations about denuclearizing not just the Koreas, but the Middle East. Israel is so obsessed with our process right now because they understand that we want our 200 nuclear bombs back and that we are not going to tolerate what Israel has been doing for 100 years now, which is destabilizing the Middle East so that they can suck money out of the United States and destroy everybody's lives, all right? And that is, again, a distinction between the Zionist genocidal apartheid state of Israel and the lovely religion of Jews, which reserve, deserves as much respect and tolerance as Jews, Muslims, Christians, Protestants, and so forth. This is an intellectual and a moral distinction that is lost in Norway. If someone tells you anti-Zionism is anti-Semitic, you should immediately ask them, how much are the Zionists paying you to say that? You were recommended uh, to the, for the Nobel Peace Prize uh, some time back. And just to pull out a small story here, 
when uh, Hillary Clinton was in office and the Clinton Foundation was running very well and acquiring a lot of funds, billions of dollars. Due to that, uh, the Judicial Watch, or the public watchdog here uh, in, in the United States, um, looking into and investigating uh, government corruption, they found that Norway, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, and mind you, Norway being the Qatar of Europe, uh, were oil rich and with mm -hmm. gas and all, Norway was uh, among the three top foreign state contributors to the Clinton Foundation. And uh, we stopped funding the Clinton Foundation the very moment, almost, that Hillary Clinton uh, did not win the election here in the United States. And we've seen a range of top officials from the Secretary General of NATO, to leading positions within the EU and very and always leading positions in the UN. To what degree do our politicians in Norway fully aware that this pay for play gives Norway a position and Norwegian politicians a position on the international stage? Well, let me say it's widely known that your former prime minister bought his job at NATO by donating to the Clinton Foundation. If I were a Norwegian citizen, I would be asking for a criminal investigation into how he did that and why he did that and so forth. I would hold him accountable for spending Norwegian taxpayer money to buy himself his next job. That's not right. Um, I would say, I like to say that 90% of the people, including politicians, are good people trapped in a bad system. In the case of politicians, it's probably closer to 30%. But anyway, I would say 100% of your politicians know that they have a corrupt system. Now, what the Nordics did right was social justice. They got the labor corporation equation right back in the 50s. That's been diminished since then. It's under attack now. It needs to be reinvigorated, reinvigorated. From where I sit, the Nordics are as close to a wonderful starting point as one could find for getting the next century right. Uh, I mean, I deeply admire the universities in Denmark, particularly uh, in Sweden, in Norway. I'm not familiar with Finland. Uh, Iceland, I guess, is part of the Nordics as well. They've got some extraordinary talent there with respect to the next generation internet. From where I sit, the Nordic countries should be saying to themselves, how will we become central to the Arctic century? They should be having that discussion. I don't hear a word of that. When you look into, for example, the, the Norwegian socialist system, because we are a very strong socialist state, although currently under a conservative government, socialism being the kind of system that has a very strong state, and the state employs most of the people. I think 50% of the Norwegian mm. workforce are employed by the state. That means to say the universities are completely controlled. When you go mm. and look which kind of books are published mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. are available for the students, you will almost only find uh, Herbert Marcuse and the Frankfurter School mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. all kinds of sociology and, you know, pertaining to the liberal progressive mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. If you look into the media, we have the media being funded by 8 billion Norwegian kroner a year. It's really a lot of money being funded into that system. And many of the journalists frankly state that uh, they cannot do certain topics, they cannot, due to being afraid, the, the leading TV stations, of losing precisely that uh, government funding. And uh, millions go into the government funding f towards the media, for example. And then uh, one may go further and look into the politicians and who mm -hmm. funds what. But the question is, the system is really tightly controlled from a socialist angle. That's a good point. And, and one of the reasons why I want Donald Trump to run again, I absolutely want him to be president and win the election in 2020, is that he is a catalyst for change. He's an accidental president. That's my most popular Kindle on, um, uh, at Amazon, and it's also free online. He was not expecting to win. He was running for his brand. 
he has the power to shift the entire system, which is why if the United States of America were to take the lead on an open source agency and election reform, I think it would spread like wildfire. Because up to this point, the deep state, the shadow government, including the governments in Europe and the Nordic countries, uh, they have been relying on a public that is dumbed down and inattentive. And so what we have to do now is educate the public and show them that they can in fact govern themselves. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about here in the United States, the original intent of the Founding Fathers was to have one congressman for every 50,000 people. And in fact, we have one congressman now for roughly every million people, which means the congressman is too easy to be bought, he's not in touch with his people and so forth. I think there needs to be a restructuring of, of how citizens vote. And, and, and the third major change which the United States can make, which might lead to change in Europe, is eliminating the federal income tax and having only the automated payment transaction tax, which is collected from the bottom up. What this means is that localities will pay the provincial government budget and the provincial governments will pay the federal budget. And in order for the federal budget to be funded, it has to be presented as a balanced budget. So for me, the Truth Channel, election reform, and the elimination and the nationalization of the Federal Reserve. I think all central banks will be nationalized in the next 10 years. Russia, the Philippines, others have started. I think Donald Trump has virtually nationalized the, uh, the Federal Reserve. And I think that if he doesn't do the job in one or two terms, others will. Would you agree that uh, we may structure what's happening in this world in the following manner, that uh, Donald Trump surprisingly winning the election here represents the old world order? That is to say, he wants to strengthen the nation-based state, uh, our national sovereignty, the respect for international law, and each nation's sovereign rights to determine uh, within its own borders, values, religions. Uh, we have seen how he wants to get the jobs back to the United States. He wants to work for the working class within the United States to prosper. He wants to close the borders so that the legal workers and immigrants in this country will not have their wages lowered. I mean, that is what is all about. And that opposed to the kind of globalist, internationalist, based on the transnational business model that we have seen rise from the 90s and up till today. Actually from the 20s. Okay, uh, in which I believe Oxfam now states 60 individuals own more than half of world assets. And this is a model that does not redistribute wealth when outsourcing job. It's a model that doesn't want to pay taxes in the nation state. And it's a model for the ultra rich that is dependent upon borders remaining open. Well, let me say a couple of things. Uh, number one, I think Trump does, as you say, represent the, the old order. And, and someone else wrote this as a very, very wise thing. He said, Trump understands buildings. He thinks of the United States of America as his building now. And so what do you do to maintain your building and protect it and have it look nice? Okay, the United States of America for our president is a building. And so he wants security for that building. He wants all his workers to be well-dressed and employed and happy and so forth. However, he still has a problem with the Zionists and the neoconservatives. What we are doing in Venezuela is absolutely unforgivable. CIA has basically funded an opposition candidate who was not even in the election. We're interfering in election in, in the Venezuelan affairs right now. We should not be. This is a replay of Noriega, where we went into Panama because George W. Bush, who was America's largest drug runner, was angry that Noriega wasn't paying him enough. OK, so Trump is doing a lot of good things, but things like Venezuela suggest that he is not yet in complete control and that he has to allow the neocons. Elliot Abrams is a war criminal. OK, that man should not be allowed in public service. Um, Mike Pompeo is in over his head. Uh, he needs to go back to Kansas and run for senator. 
I'd love to see someone like John Huntsman come back. I mean, Huntsman has been ambassador to Chinese, ambassador to Russia now. Huntsman, I think, would serve the, the uh, president very well, and he would terminate Mitt, Mitt Romney, uh, who most Mormons don't like. Okay, What Trump has not done is connected with the 99%. He has not reached down and built up his power base. He's done well with his human trafficking law, with his indictments. We're all waiting for arrests. He, he is losing his base. If we don't see public arrests of the Podestas, the Clintons, Dick Cheney, and so forth, if we don't see these public arrests between now and Election Day, he may not be reelected in 2020. And returning to the national security, I do believe I read one of your articles in which you're arguing that the question is whether national security is to protect a small elite mm, yes. or is it to the benefit uh, of the people? I mean, we hear about Muslim terrorists, Muslim terrorists. National Muslim security is a criminal organization. All right. In fact, I'm reading a book now that was written back in the 70s called The High Priests of Waste. I'm friends with Chuck Spinney, who wrote uh, The Defense Reality Plans Mismatch, all right? The Department of Defense is 50% waste and cannot win wars, all right? The Department of Defense is 50% waste and cannot win wars. We buy what the contractors want to sell us. The USS Gerald Ford and the uh, J-35 are two examples of absolutely rotten American combinations of technology that no other country should be, should be buying. In fact, I think the Canadians just canceled the J-35. They, they woke up. The National Security Council is how the deep state controls the president of the United States. If I were president, I would eliminate the National Security Council entirely. And I would have a national strategy advisory group, which could cover all threats, all policies, all players, all costs in a 12-person group, and then basically help the president guide the country toward what we call holistic analytics and true cost economics and open source everything engineering uh, solutions. That's what he should be putting in the, pre in the area that the press would be thrown out of. National security is a scam. It's a fraud. It's a crime in the United States. We all remember the uh, Judicial Watch retrieved uh, back in 2015 and onward, uh, the Hillary Clinton emails and the scandal surrounding that to Clinton Foundation. Um, to what degree does it constitute a national threat to the United States that foreign powers are influencing your elections, for one, influencing your politicians, accessing the various, you know, to what degree would you say that is a threat also pertaining to the uh, NSA and these very massive bulk data, again, Binny pointing out that they create like such a big meta information that really you can't penetrate it. What's the role of the Chinese into all of this and the Russians and other states and the UK, well, not the least the UK? Mm, yeah, and the reason the president has not released the FISA documents is because it would indict GCHQ, MI6 and the Queen of England in interfering in American elections. The two countries that tried seriously to interfere in the, in the 2016 American election were Great Britain. My friends in Ireland and Scotland asked me to please never refer to the United Kingdom. It no longer exists. Australia, Canada, Ireland, Scotland are probably going to be free of the Commonwealth within 10 to 15 years. But the, United, the Great Britain and Israel were the two powers. And again, I stress, the FBI is a theatrical agency. It is not actually allowed to do counterintelligence. It's not allowed to go after white collar criminals or out and out agents of a foreign power and traitors and, uh, and it's not allowed to go after, after pedophiles. Um, let's take an example of where Trump has been badly served by this national security enterprise. He did a tweet recently on 5G. 5G is a weaponized system that will kill you and it is also how the global elite plan to ration energy in the future. Once the, if the Internet of Things is allowed to take place, there's a very good reason why the Amish refuse to have electricity in their houses. Uh, once 5G is fully implemented, it's just like digital cash. If the government doesn't like you, they'll turn you off. 
It's a serious situation. How do you foresee the future in the sense that uh, the so-called rule of the people, the democracy, and of course the wonderful American Constitution and the Bill of Rights that you have, which uh, I would argue is the best in the modern world pertaining to civil liberties uh, for the individual citizens. We're seeing this system waning. Um, how do you see the future? I would not be heard today if it weren't for Donald Trump. All right? I mean, the CIA has successfully marginalized me for 30 years because they're terrified of the idea that I can do 100% of what we need in the way of intelligence, actually 96%. I can do 96% of what the president needs in the way of decision support, which CIA is not doing today, for $3 billion a year. Okay, whereas we're spending upwards toward $100 billion a year for stealing stuff and regime change and drone assassinations and rendition and torture and blackmailing our own members of Congress. The future is bright because Donald Trump came out of nowhere. Many would say by the hand of God. All right. Donald Trump came out of nowhere. He's changed everything. Let me give you an idea of what could happen in, later in this year. Imagine... Robert Steele, Cynthia McKinney, Jesse Ventura, Ralph Nader, Ron Paul, Dennis Kucinich, Jill Stein. We'll even throw in Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, and we'll have two lookalikes, two comedians, one that looks like Bernie Sanders and one that looks like Donald Trump. Imagine this as a national tour talking about how do we restore America the beautiful? it will determine who the next president of the United States is. And on that note, thank you very much, Robert Steele, for graciously taking out of your precious time to joining us here at the Herland Report uh, discussing current American affairs. Well, I love what you do, and I want to see the Nordics be the next century.